Good day, everyone. Steve Hollandia from Micro Ministries. Hope you're doing well. Peace to you on this lovely day of rest. Today, we're going to talk about a word that the Father has talked to me about um, a couple of last, actually, the last year. We've been here and there talking about it. So we're going to ask the question, is Jesus or Yeshua or Yahusha king? So um, I came to name as Jesus, but you can use his Hebrew names. Um, his Hebrew name is Yahusha, and Yeshua basically means salvation. So yes, and Yahusha means basically Yahuwah is our salvation. That's his, his full name. So, without further ado, let's pray. Father, we come to you and we want to honor you and bless you and thank you for the privilege of having the privilege to study your word and to be students of you, Yeshua. Um, to be your followers and to to be able to trust you and to see you as our king uh, i just want to thank you for the, the privilege so in your name we we thank you that your spirit the holy spirit will lead us into all truth as we study your word in your name i pray amen so as um, as I've been a full-time evangelist, me and my wife, we've been evangelists and um, it's been since the end of 2019. So, um, yeah, we've come across diverse people with di different belief systems and beliefs. And one of the things that, especially amongst the people who, who claim to follow the word, um, they say that Jesus is is not a king, and when you read scripture, um, you know whenever you hear a statement, whenever somebody gives you a statement, you must always test it to scripture. Go back to the scripture. What does the scripture say? So that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to test that um, statement that. Jesus is not king to the scripture. And we can see what we're going to find. For in um, 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 13, it says, For we are not writing to you anything other than, than what you read and understand, and I hope you will fully understand even to the end. So this is the scripture that the Father has given me many years ago when I started uh, this uh, micro ministries, which is his ministry, uh, micro the word micro is basically just to rehearse or um, and 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 do it exactly as he has written. So the word is perfectly plain and 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 clear. Um, whatever we read in scripture um, has been written down exactly, and it doesn't mean anything else except to what um, we can read and understand. Okay, so let's do that. Now, in 1 Timothy 4, verse 1, it says, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some will depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. And that's exactly what um, we are exposing now. Whenever people are um, saying something that is not of the word, not truth, um, not scripture, uh, not biblical, not scriptural, um, you can see that as a doctrine of devils or seducing spirits. So, what does the scripture say? In John 1 verse 49, Nathaniel answered and said, and saith unto him, it's still, it's present. Um, this is what one of the, that was one of his disciples, followers. And he said unto him, that is Yeshua, Rabbi, that means teacher. Thou art the Son of God, thou art the King of Israel. So 
his followers believed that he is the son of God, that he is the very seed, the incorruptible seed of the living God. That is, his name is Yahuwah or Yahweh, um, uh, the God that has been revealed, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Um, and thou art the king of Israel. And this is also a title that has been given only to Yahuwah, Yahweh himself. Uh, so if you read in Zephaniah uh, 3 verse 15, it says, The Lord have taken away thy judgments. He's talking to Israel. Ye have cast out thine enemy, the king of Israel. Even the Lord is in the midst of thee, and thou shalt not see evil anymore. So this has not yet been fulfilled, uh, because this is a, a scripture for Israel when I believe um, we are in the millennial reign of the Messiah himself. Uh, because he is the king of Israel, and um, Yahuwah is his name. So Mark 15 verse 2 says, Pilate questioned him, um, are you the king of the Jews? That was um, just before they crucified him and his hearing, um, and he replied, that is Jesus said to him, it is as you say. So he didn't deny that he is the king. Um, he said, uh, for reason, this reason I was, this very reason I was born. Um, and Jason, um, if you read in uh, Acts 17, verse 7, Jason is one of the followers. Um, this is his accuser speaking, and they were saying that Jason has welcomed them, this the, the, the other fellow disciples, and they are, are all saying things contrary to the decrees of Caesar, who was the king of the world at that time. Um, claiming that there is another king, namely Jesus or Yeshua. So there is another king. All the disciples claim that. Um, so that is uh, exactly what we are proclaiming as well. Um, so if you are saying that Jesus or Yeshua is not king, you are actually preaching false and you are doing the work of uh, the Antichrist. Um, 2 Peter 1 verse 11, it says, For this, uh, in this way, entry into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, will be abundantly provided to you. So as you can see, there is an eternal, that means everlasting kingdom. Um, and uh, our Lord Jesus, uh, uh, um, Savior, um, he has a kingdom. So a kingdom, you cannot have a kingdom if you're not a king. Um, so he has a Everlasting kingdom is king forever and ever. It's pretty straightforward. First Timothy 6 verse 14 to 16. Thou wilt keep this commandment without spot, unrebukable until, until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ, which in his time he shall show who is the blessed and only ruler, the King of kings and Lord of lords, who alone hath immortality, dwelling in the light, which no man can approach unto whom no man have seen nor can see to whom be honor and power everlasting amen so who is this only ruler and king of kings and lord of lords let us look revelation 17 verse 14 makes it very clear they will that is the antichrist and his forces his army they will wage war against the lamb that is christ yahushua the messiah um, and the lamb that is him, Christ, will triumph and conquer them because he is Lord of lords and King of kings. And those who are with him and on his side are the called and the chosen elect and faithful. So as you can see, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, Jesus Christ, or Yeshua HaMashiach, he is Lord of lords, King of kings. Um, scripture is very clear. Revelation 19 verse 11 to 13, and I saw heaven open and behold a white horse and he who was riding it is called faithful and true, trustworthy, loyal, incorruptible, steady and in righteousness he judges and wages war on the rebellions or the rebellious. His eyes are a flame of fire and on his head are many royal crowns. He is a king, the king of kings. You already heard that now from scripture. And he has a name inscribed on him, which no man knows or understands except himself. He is dressed in a robe dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. 
very clear. Very clear. So uh, for you to claim that Yeshua or Jesus or Yahushua is king, perfectly uh, right. Um, it is scriptural, it's biblical. As a believer in him, as a follower in him, you can claim it. He is king. In fact, he's my king, my only king. I don't have any other kings. Okay. Very important. Now, the second question um, that uh, we get out there is, is Jesus or Yeshua or Yahushua, is he God? Um, we had a lot of people saying to us, no, there's no way he's God. Um, you cannot claim that he is God. He's not Yahuwah. Um, and um, let's just test that with the scripture. A lot of people, uh, we come across people who say, no, Jesus is just a man. He's just a human being. Um, uh, yes, he was a man, but he was also 100% God. If you look at the scripture, let's look at the scripture. What does the scripture say? I say, oh, I, I, I don't use my own opinions. I just, let's read the, what the word says. So John 1 verse 1 is very clear. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. I mean, it's straightforward. You read verse 14, he says, and the word, that is God, was made flesh, and he dwelled among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father. Very important, those words, only begotten, because Jesus, or Yeshua, is the only one that was, I mean, he came from a virgin, Mary, or Miriam, and he um, is the only begotten. So that means he's the only incarnation, or the very... Um, image of the invisible God. He was incarnate as Yahuwah came in the flesh. Let's look at scripture. It's full of grace and truth. Uh, psalm 23 verse 1. It's a very um, famous psalm. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want or lack anything. So that word the Lord. The Lord is basically Yahuwah or Yahweh. Uh, David was proclaiming that. Now let's see what, what did Yeshua uh, say in John 10 verse 14 he says I'm the good shepherd I mean um, he's, he knows exactly what he was saying and the people in his days knew exactly what he was saying and know my sheep and I'm known of mine I mean they knew exactly what he was claiming to be he was claiming to be Yahuwah, Yahweh and, um, and that's why they took up stones they wanted to, to, to kill him um 1 Corinthians 12, verse 3. Wherefore, I give you, uh, you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus accursed, and that no man can say that Jesus is the Lord but by the Holy Ghost. So um, this is straightforward from Scripture. It's very clear that you cannot, this revelation that God became a man is uh, something that the Spirit of God can only reveal to you. Um, you can only say it through the Spirit of God. It's not not something that um, uh, I mean. When when uh, Yeshua uh, asked his disciples, "Who am I?" What does the people say? "Who am I?" And then the one said, "You're a prophet." The other one said, um, "This or that." And then he said, "What?" But who do you say I am? And then Peter said, "You are the Christ, the Anointed One, the Messiah, the Son of the Living uh, Elohim, the Living God." Um, so the very seed of the living God. I mean, it's so clear. Um, and then Jesus said to him, "This could, uh, this cannot has not been revealed to you by man. It has only been revealed to my Father, which is the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Truth." Um, one John four verse 11, uh, verse um, one says, "Beloved, believe not every spirit, but test, try every spirit, the spirits whether they are of God, because." Many false prophets are gone out into the world. It's very clear. There's many false prophets that has gone out into the world. Hereby you know the Spirit of God, and every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist. So this is very clear. Um, if you read the Hebrew name uh, or, or the the, the, the the phrase again, but putting in the meanings of his name. Um, it's, very, it's very clear that hereby you know the Spirit of God and the Spirit of Antichrist. 
every spirit that confesseth that, of course, Jesus or Yahusha, it means basically that um, Yahusha means Yahuwah, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Our salvation. Okay, so let's read it again. Every spirit that confesseth that Yahuwah, our salvation, the anointed one, is coming to flesh. I mean, this is straightforward. If you can proclaim that and you confess that, you're of God. But if you don't do that, you're a spirit of you, you're um, of the spirit of Antichrist. So this is straightforward in, in, in scripture. John 8, verse 23, it says, And he said unto them, Ye are from beneath, I am from above. Ye are of this world, I am not of this world. This is so straightforward. Um, John 8, verse 24. And this is the key because um, I asked that I was struggling with this and, 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 and then the father said to me, this is not, this is not a small thing. This is um, a, a salvation issue. Um, John 8 verse 24, it says, and listen what the, what the king of kings said. He said, I said therefore unto you that ye shall die in your sins. If ye believe not that I am he, ye shall die in your sins. So, if you not do, if you not do not believe that he is the the only true one, the, the anointed one, the uh, Yahuwah, King of Kings and Lord of Lords, that is manifested in the flesh. There's no way. Um, um, if you don't believe that he is, you should die in your sins. It's straightforward. And how can I say this? Well, there's a there's a test. Um, the Father has given us a test. Deuteronomy 13, verse 1 to 5, it says, If a prophet or a dreamer of dreams arises among you and he gives a sign for a wonder. And I mean, Yeshua did a lot of signs and wonders. And uh, the sign of wonder that tell, he tells you comes to pass. I mean, a lot of nowadays, there's a lot of signs and wonders. Um, there's even prophets that, I mean, they're telling you stuff and they're proper signs very accurately. But then they say, if that same person tells you, let us go after other gods, which you have not known, and let us serve them, you shall not listen to the words of that prophet or um, that dreamer of dreams. For the Lord your God is testing you to know whether you love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul. You shall walk after the Lord your God, fear him, keep his commandments, obey his voice. You shall serve him and hold fast, cleave unto him. So, it's very clear that these things that are happening is, is not always when uh, these uh, false prophets are coming. It's not um, always the devil that's sending them. It is, <laughs> I think it's a lot of the time, it's the Lord testing your heart, whether you are really loving him with all of your heart. Um, so if Jesus, if you believe he's just a man, if you believe he's a man who saved you, or he's not God, then you are you are an enemy. He's claiming to be God. Then obviously, then he's another God. Then uh, you are. That's why, I mean, a lot of uh, the, the them took up stones because um, they couldn't accept the fact that God can be here with them, um, and that that totally blow their minds away. So, if you if you don't believe this. Um, you are you are actually making uh, if you believe he's just a man, then you are making him a golden calf um, because he's another god, another way to come to the Father, uh, where he is the way. I mean, he's a very image. Uh, if, you, if you look at what the, the, the scripture is saying, uh, but he says that prophet or dream of dreams shall be put to death. So that's that's um, very uh, strict. Uh, judgment so what does uh, Titus 2 verse 13 say looking for that blessed hope and the glorious being of our, the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ so obviously it's saying here that our Savior Jesus Christ is the great God so it's perfectly clear in scripture Isaiah 45 verse 21 this concludes I mean this is really um, nailing it uh, it, it, it is Yahuwah himself speaking. It is, it is uh, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob who, who, who is speaking here, saying, tell me, tell me, and bring them here. Yea, that means yes. Let them take counsel together. 
who have declared this from ancient time, who have told it from that time. Have not I, the Lord, that is Yahuwah, and there is no God else beside me, a just God and a Savior. There is none besides me. Look unto me and be ye saved, all the ends of the earth. So this really is so, he's, he's claiming that there's no other way, all you, that all the people on the earth, there's no other savior. It's only Yahuwah that can save you. For I'm God and there is none else. There's no other God. So if you believe that Jesus is uh, uh, someone else or the, uh, that he's only a man and a man saved you, you're creating another God. Um, if you don't believe that he is Yahuwah, the one who's our savior. Judge, uh, uh, Jude 1 verse 25 says, To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen. So who is this only wise God and Savior? Um, obviously, it's Yahuwah. Now, this scripture is so clear and plain. Isaiah 9 verse 6, it says, For unto us a child is born. And to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. That means he's king. And his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. I mean, this is straightforward. This is a prophecy of the Messiah that is coming, Yahusha. And he, one of his names will be the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father. I mean, you couldn't get it clearer than this. Matthew 1 verse 23. Behold, a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. I mean, you couldn't get it any clearer. God is with us. When, you, when Yeshua walked on the earth, God is with us. I mean, so clear. Psalm uh, 45 verse 6, it's talking about, um, it's a psalm that, uh, that was written and it's a, it's a prophecy. It's um, we. Uh, um, you know, God is basically speaking to himself, if you can say it like that. Um, and he's saying, thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. The scepter of thy kingdom is a right scepter. Thou lovest righteousness and hatest wickedness. Therefore, God, thy God, hath anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. Um, if, you, if you look at that, that is a scripture that's clearly, is the father speaking to the, to the son. Um, and he's, this is what is happening. If, if you pull it through, the uh, the the uh, the believer um, that wrote uh, the, the the letter to the the Hebrews, the letter to the Hebrews, um, one verse eight says, it pulls exactly the two verses word for word, and it applies it to the Son, which is Jesus Christ, Yeshua Hamashiach. So, but unto the Son he saith, Thy throne O god is forever and ever a scepter of righteousness is a, is a scepter of thy kingdom and in verse 9 thou has loved righteousness and hated iniquity therefore god even thy god have anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows i mean this is so clear i mean you couldn't get past it colossians 1 verse 16 says for by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth visible or invisible whether they be thrones or dominions, principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. This is so clear. And this is, uh, I'm talking about Jesus Christ. So Isaiah 45 verse 11, thus saith the Lord, and that is Yahuwah, that is Josiah writing the name of the Lord, Yahuwah, Yahweh, the Holy One of Israel and his maker. Ask me things to come, Concerning my sons and concerning the work of my hands, commanding me. Isaiah 45, verse 12, is, is in the next verse, he's continuing. I have made the earth and created man upon it. I, even my hands, have stretched out the heavens and all the hosts host have I commanded. Um, I mean, it's, it's so clear. Yahuwah is, is saying he's the creator. But scriptures is saying Jesus Christ is creator. He's the creator. So, obviously, there's no contradiction. Uh, the, the, the obviousness is actually that Yahusha or Jesus Christ is Yahuwah. Because Yahusha means Yahuwah, our salvation. So, it's, it's pretty straightforward. 
Malachi 2 verse uh, 10. Have we not all one Father? Have not one God created us? Why do we then deal treacherously every man against his brother by profaning the covenant of our fathers? So this is very clear. We have one Father, one God who created us. Uh, Ephesians 1 verse 9. To make all men to see what is the fellowship of this mystery, the mystery, which from the beginning of the world have been hid in God who created all things by Jesus Christ. So it's very clear that Jesus Christ has created all things. And this is the mystery of that fellowship that we have. Um, John 8 verse 58. Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, um, Before Abraham was, I am. So he's talking to the, the um, Israelites there. And he's saying to them, he's saying, I mean, they say to him, um, you're, you've claimed that you've seen Abraham, but you're not even 50 years old. But then he is surprised before Abraham was, I am. He's using the very same words that, um, that Yahuwah used when he spoke out of the burning bush to uh, uh, Moses. I mean, this is so clear. John 14, verse 7 to 9. Uh, if you had known me, you should have known my father also. And from henceforth, you know him and have seen him. Then Philip, one of his disciples, he saith, saith unto him, Lord, show us the Father. And still today, this is present things. There are a lot of disciples just saying, um, Lord, Yeshua, just show us the Father. And that will be enough for us. But Jesus saith unto us, present things. He's not say, said unto us. He's saying, Jesus saith unto him, have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that have seen me have seen the Father. This is so clear. He is, I mean, you couldn't say it clearer than that. And how says then, uh, thou then show us the Father? So if you have seen Yeshua, you have seen Yahuwah. It's so clear. Um, he's spelling it out for you. So it's as a believer of uh, of Yahuwah uh, or Yeshua or Yahusha, uh, it's perfectly fine to say that Yahuwah is Yahusha or Ye Yeshua is Ye Yahuwah, um, um, and it is it is it is good to to, to claim the truth. Um, yes. Yeah, so from my side, thank you very much for for listening. Let's pray together. Father, we we come to you and we thank you um, that you are. Our Father, you've given us your word. Your word was made flesh and um, you dwelled among us and you gave us your, your spirit, your breath, the breath of holiness. And you, um, you teach us and, and your breath leads us into all truth. And we thank you for that, Father. And we want to bless you and, 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 and thank you for, for um, such an awesome uh, revelation that we can study your word and know that you are who you said you are. And we bless you, Father, in Yeshua's name. Okay. Have a good day further um, and um, stay blessed. Shalom.